forces of evil march on the lonely mountain. However, an alliance of elves, dwarfs, and men will stand their ground and defend this bastion against the forces of Dol Guldor and evil. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to the battle the of the approaches. five armies we are diving in onto the latest update of rise of mordor that you just saw adds in the awesome woodland realm right here and so we can actually finally do the battle of the five armies because like properly with all the units because obviously now we have frangil's elves and we also have dogal door which is one of the new factions in the latest update which i do recommend you guys go and check out i'll leave a link to it down below in the description but they get a whole ton of really awesome looking mordor orcs and uh yeah great stuff right here they look fierce ready for battle and uh, the models have done a great job here with all the new, new, new different types of units and uh, soldiers and stuff will hopefully make for a very very exciting a battle indeed as the hordes from dol guldor come clashing in against the alliance of elves and there's over 21,000 units in this battle as well absolutely crazy 14,000 forces from Dol Guldur and then 7,000 from the Alliance of Men, Elves and Dwarfs. Not to mention we are on a pretty awesome map as well. This was made by Empty, I believe. Uh, and yeah, it's great. Obviously, you've got the Lonely Mountain off in the corner right there. You have the kind of passage where the Dwarfs would have made their way down to reform up with the Elves. And then obviously we have the... I mean, obviously, we have the City of Dale as well. Completely ruined, burnt to a crisp. However, the defenders are rushing back. And I think you can also actually see the forces of men uh, making their way back there fairly quickly. The dwarves are obviously much like the movie moving in to engage them. You have the men of Dale set up in the elven formation. And I imagine their first objective will be to fall back into the city. Uh, I absolutely love the Lake Town Guard. One of my favorite units of Dale for sure. They look absolutely awesome. They're actually a really fast moving unit. Unit as well so obviously as always we have the you know the uh, the alliance of men elves and dwarfs getting ready to defend here the men will probably move back to dale in this battle the dwarfs will go to engage them and the elves will probably turn up a little bit later then obviously we have the main assault from dol Guldur coming in through the uh the worms that appeared out of the ground if we're going by the movie style uh yeah basically this entire army is going to be coming down the hill looking to engage not only the forces of dale but also cut off the attack on the lonely mountain and then we'll have a final attack from dol Guldur coming in from over here reinforcing i assume there will be delays to when these forces can move but yeah these soldiers will make their way in and uh, look to destroy uh, what they can. And these are like the phantom units. So these are kind of like wraiths in a sense. Uh, they're kind of more like undead kind of like ghost type things. Uh, pretty cool like filthy looking unit that's going to be reinforcing right there. So yeah, let's just get this battle started. Let's see how this one develops. Obviously, as we are starting, a massive shout out to all the guys who played in this battle. I really appreciate the replay and the ability to, to show off such an awesome battle. Uh, and you guys, if you do want to see more of these, do make sure to go drop a like and a comment down below and also make sure to join my discord because there's a bunch of people looking for more guys to play with uh, when it does come to this so uh, yeah do go check it out so right now the dwarfs are moving their forces forward uh, the men from uh, the oh actually okay we do have the elves on the march we have some just kind of uh, heavy sword infantry making their way forward I guess reforming the line defending their position obviously preparing for anything else we do have the cavalry from Dale moving back in. The Lake Town horses retreating back to the city as fast as they can. Because that is going to be the objective for Dale, obviously, to hold their line. And there you go. The dwarves are no longer standing alone. The elves are marching to reinforce their battle lines. However, no, they're not going to fully commit their lives. They're gonna, they're gonna, this is like a very elvish thing to do, I feel like. You know, let the dwarves go forward. Let the dwarves take the brunt of the assault. And then the elves come in and engage them. But the hordes of orcs are moving forward. And as I said, over 21,000 soldiers in this battle. Dale is already being bombarded by artillery. Obviously looking to make that breach. And it's extremely important. As you see off in the distance, the soldiers going across the bridge in Dale. Just trying to get in there. But it's extremely important. The forces of Dol Guldur, which again just look absolutely humongous. I mean, look at that, man. Oh, it looks so good. That's a true battle of the five armies right there. Siege towers in the distance. That looks amazing. The spears as well moving forward. Looks great. This is absolutely spectacular. With the forces set up like this. 
ready to clash. But yeah, it's very important for Dolgador that they don't let anyone stop them from getting through this choke point into the city because they obviously want to engage the dwarves and they want to also attack Dale because they could quite easily do that. The Dwarven battle line is now set up, ready to withstand. The elves are in hot pursuit. And then you obviously have the men of Dale rushing back to defend the city as well. But yeah, it's going to be pretty, pretty brutal to the, the, the defenders when this army activates. Because as you can see, they pushed up very far here. And that's going to allow the secondary army or the, the fifth army, I guess, to come in and really hit into the rear of the defenders. Cross the bridge into the city and obviously much, much more. So the Dwarven battle line is prepared. Get ready, boys. The war for the, for the Lonely Mountain is about to begin. The Elven Archers are volleying, though. First volleys, unleashing hell, whittling down the numbers from the Elven battle line. Reinforcements moving forward. Bring it down, boys. Volley! Off they go. Whittling down the numbers of these wraiths moving up from Dogwood Door. See if these guys can take a decent fire. And I actually really love the colored uh, tips to the arrows. Actually, kind of makes them a lot more visible. And there you go. They're going to be smashing in to the Dwarven battle line. First rank. The elves are coming in, though. They stand alone. Not alone. Rohiro. I'd be so sick if Rohiro turned up. Okay, dwarfs and elves fight together against the forces of evil. Man, I've actually, I've actually literally got goosebumps right now. This is so awesome. And there you go, the force of Dolgaldor clashing against the might of the dwarves and elves. And the battle is fierce right now. Obviously going to be using their numbers to their advantage moving in, but there's a lot of missile fire. I mean, obviously you have to worry about these dudes right here. This unit, which is uh, the, the glaives, the gold or glaives, these dudes will be ripping apart the Dwarven formation. And you can see they're utilizing this space right now around the Dwarven formation. The elves are not going to allow them to do this, though. And try and reinforce. But look at this. There's a lot of men, or I guess orcs, who have broken their way through. The glaives are now engaging the back line of the elves. The elves have had to try to do something to stop them. But a really nice move. I don't quite understand how they managed to find this gap. But it probably came around this way, right? And they're obviously just utilizing their numbers. The men are fleeing as fast as they can, getting back inside of Dale, but they're going to be kind of late to the party. I mean, they'll make their way inside the city, but the river is being crossed right now by the enemy forces. So they're going to they're gonna be like a very rushed defense. Luckily, like the main force isn't going to be inside the city in time, but I mean, oh my God, just look at it, man. And this is what you get when you have such a large-scale engagement. 21,000 men, you know, like, this is what you end up getting. And it's absolutely insane. It really is a true battle of the five armies, if there ever was one. Look at that. The men are cheering for victory and glory. But I don't know if that is going to be so easy to obtain and this is a unit of okay the dwarves have fallen back there just to reinforce i mean this is going to be a huge turning point obviously it's the amount of missile fire that all these elven archer battalions can output if they can just hammer the enemy volley after volley then you know maybe they'll be able to whittle down the enemy I mean, there's obviously a lot of archer fire coming in heavily trying to focus down these uh, more aggressive pikemen Quicker they go down, the better. And there you go. The city has been breached. However, the cavalry acting as a slowing factor, charging down the hill to defend Dale and basically give the forces of Dale time to get into the city and set up a defense because if this cavalry wasn't here, the city would be lost. It would be overrun and destroyed. But these brave fishermen are managing to, to withstand and hold Biding time for reinforcements, and there you go. Exactly enough time right there. I mean, these soldiers will be exhausted by the time they get here. Not very well fighting, but these are just fishermen anyway, so not really going to be too good. But at least they'll be able to set up a, a decent defense here. Hold these choke points, get their archers, get their marksmen of Dale around and ready to withstand their assault. So, so far, things are looking pretty crazy. And it does seem like the dwarves are starting to fall back. The overwhelming assault has been pretty crazy 
Uh, and they're getting hammered every step of the way. But it does look like this is a fighting retreat already. Again, this is you know, a cinematic battle. So you can expect the players to try and just you know, create more of a fun uh, scenario rather than anything else. And obviously acting more like a movie. But that's not why they're retreating. They're retreating because the fifth army is here. Another horde from Dolgaldor has arrived. Over 2,000. Uh, orcs coming into the rear. That's forcing the dwarves back. I mean, again, look at that. Oh, the Lonely Mountain looks so good. Erebor in the mist. Oh, absolutely amazing. The, the next reinforcements. And as I said, yeah, it's going to slowly force them to retreat back. But the Orcs have come around. These raiders have managed to come up here. And oh, this is going to be brutal. If they can get a javelin throw off onto the uh, the defenders as they fall back. Oh, that's going to be brutal. Come on, boys. Throw your little your javelins. There we go. Into the rear of the elves as well. Oh, that's going to... No, I mean, not taking down an elf yet. But the next volley will. I can mean, imagine a lot of these are just glint, glinting off the armor. Come on. You're going to kill something? There you go. He's trying to drop them down. I was going to say... Uh, we are also getting some of the Elven Kin Riders as well. Frangio himself entering the city with a Bard, the Dragon Slayer. Looking to reinforce. So Frangio's moving in. Bard, or Bard is actually over in the Lake Town Guard. But we'll pretend he's, he's in that cavalry unit. And yeah, there you go. The forces from Lake Town are now engaging the heavily armored orcs. I mean, no match whatsoever, right? Absolutely won't stand a chance against these you know, legions of orc. Heavily armored, clad in iron against these poor, poor spear militia. Don't stand a chance. They really need to try and utilize their archer fire if they can. That's what's going to really help them out. And yeah, just like that. Oh my god. The elves are getting hammered right now. They really are. And the dwarfs. These forces are now getting enveloped. Yeah, this outward defense. It would have been maybe a good idea just to bring everyone back. Obviously, they brought their main defense back, waiting for their king. Is there? Oh, look at that as well. I did not even see that. Forin himself is ready to lead the charge out. Wonderful. That's, that's so sick. I didn't even see him in there because I couldn't see his little picture above his head. But you see Forin ready to rally out as they set up their last defense. But yeah, this is, this is not looking good for the forces of good at all. With, you know, legions of orcs at their back. They're going to be completely surrounded momentarily. And that could spell disaster for them. Even with the volleys coming in from the archers. They're still struggling to really mitigate the amount of missile fire. And the, the small goblins, even though they don't really have, like, the best archers. The best, uh, you know, ability to rapid fire and stuff like that. You know, the volume of shots really does rack up. And every single volley makes a huge huge difference and obviously now that the reinforcements are turning up they're going to come flying into the back of the elven forces the archers are going to struggle and i mean even look at that as well this unit is down to half strength after all the javelins and then fighting both of these mirkwood uh, raider units i mean that's not too bad that's pretty good for the mirkwood uh, raiders considering how cheap they are however they're going to be up against a lot more crazy crazy units soon as we do have this unit of phantoms charging in I love the way that they're running as well. Their animation is great. It's kind of just like they're all over the place as they smash into the back of the Elven Archer line. I mean, luckily, these Elven Archers are facing them and they're obviously Elves, so they're not going to be doing too bad. It's still going to be a hard fight, that is for sure. As more and more dudes come around, more and more elite Gold War Glaives making their way around and the Elves are fighting to the last... Obviously, Dolgodor pikes on the left. Heavy, heavy blades on the front. I mean, I love this unit as well. I love the skulls on their back. Such a good looking unit for Dolgodor. As they just smash in against the Elven Kin. They even have some artillery left as well. And a lot of archers as well. Yeah, this has been an all out brout for the Elves and Dwarfs. It really is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they haven't really even killed that many either. Look at that. Only down to 4,800 men left now. Yeah, the, uh, the Orcs are doing an amazing job. Frangel himself are engaging some of the Phantoms. 
the Elkim Riders. However, obviously fighting against these phantoms, they do have spears, so we're doing pretty good against them. It's fighting hard though, but unfortunately there is no moose model in the game or reindeer, whatever it is. Over here, the Lake Town Guard are holding the line. That's exactly what they should be doing. Holding this line as the Archer Fire comes raining down. That's how they're going to win inside the city. It's having this Archer Fire rattle down volley after volley. Just taking down Ork and Ork. That's, exactly, that's you know, precisely what we're doing on every single side. You want some shipmen coming in the side as well, which is definitely going to be the, the heavier medium infantry for Dale. Not their elite, but still pretty decent. So these, these shipmen are the only unit here that can probably hold its own against the majority of Dogledore's roster. Obviously, the more aggressive Glaive's not going to stand a chance, but still. So if we take a look at the overall map, I mean, things are not looking good. Right, there is Harvey. So all the, the red is the elves and the dwarfs and the men, and the blue is Dogledore and yellow is Dogledore. You can see they've been completely routed on the outward attack and they're on full on retreat. They have set up a nice little kill zone right here though, which is definitely pretty impressive. The dwarves have been pushed back to the mountain, ready for their king to rally them forward. And the elves have set up a nice little crossfire right here, utilizing, utilizing this cover right here, this choke point, and just firing a volley or two at their opponents. I mean, obviously a very, very smart idea here. Because this way they'll be able to kill a lot more of them as they come in. Especially if the dwarves can hammer them from one side. And then these move, dudes move in as well. But this army right here is pretty exhausted. Also this unit uh, of the Dole Door Glaives. Yeah, I mean, you can cheer all you want, mate. But there's about to be about another 100 arrows cut. Yep. Oh, I mean, he survived that volley. Can he survive another one? Let's see what he's made of. No, a lone arrow moving across. You missed, Legolas. There we go. Another, another 200 arrows coming in. This must have him. There you go. He goes down. I mean, a bit of a waste of arrows, but hilarious nonetheless. And yeah, here they go. They're forming up now. There are still a few pockets of Elven resistance here. I think it's like a lone man. And there's actually a handful of these elves still left remaining. I mean, shout out to them. And they are still taking down a few of these. A few of these orcs are still being brought down. So you can't blame, but they are being brutally taken down and dropping. Helm's Deep, anyone right there? No Aragorn to catch you this time. Even though these are obviously different elves. These are Frangils, not uh, Lothlorien elves. And it's so sick. Like, Rise of Mordor in the latest update is definitely... Worth playing now. Like, I mean, it's always worth playing, but definitely worth re downloading. Again, link will be in the description because now you have two elven factions. You have a, you have Mordor, you have Dolgaldor, you obviously have the usual elves. Uh, so, you have the usual Gondor. Rohan has a handful of units. Uh, there's a million of awesome maps as well. Like, there's so many good updates. Look at that as well. It's almost as if the eye of Sauron is watching from the distance. I mean, Mordor isn't that crazy far away from the uh, from Erebor. I mean, it kind of is, but I guess it's actually is because it's much further north. <laughs> but still, the eye is always watching. Looks great. And here we go. The assault is coming in on the Lonely Mountain. I really don't want to miss, uh, you know, uh, foreign come running out. So we're quickly going to take a look at the city and then we'll go rushing back. And the city still looks like it's in a pretty much of a stalemate. And as I said, you know, a great job here by the defenders. Forming up a defensive wall right there and just firing in archer volley after archer volley, just hammering away. And I mean, look at that, you're doing you're routing a ton of their forces. They might actually win in the city pretty handedly. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Dogledor haven't committed enough to the city to take it. Obviously, the, the men of Dale can fall back to the inner slayer as well of this ruined city if they need to. But yeah, for the most part. Shout out to them. You know, Dogledore didn't commit enough here. And uh, they're really going for the kill on the Lonely Mountain. Which obviously is probably their priority, right? They want to take the Lonely Mountain. They don't really care about Dale. So it makes absolute sense. Oh, and here he comes. Is he ready to march out? Is he ready to come flying out? The dwarfs rally. The dwarfs rally to their king. For the king! For the king! 
Come on, you can at least be running, Frandrio. The dwarves are broken. Your cousin. Is it your cousin? Is he cousin? Yeah, I think it's his cousin. Is in perils. Let's charge out. Let's charge. Come on, run. God damn it. Your dwarves are dying. Oh, he's coming. I mean, a bit anticlimactic. <laughs> I was expecting... I mean, he is running, apparently. So it's not the... Uh, yeah, it's no one's fault here. He is apparently running. I think it's just the terrain. There you go. For the king! I wish we had some battle horns right now as he makes his way forward. Look at him. That's Frangil right there. Frangil? That's for him right there. That's a grudge. Smashing in. Rallying the dwarves. But I mean, I don't know if it's going to be enough. They are heavily smashed. And here we go. The elves are reinforcing. Unlike they did in the movie. The elves are coming with their spears. Taking a javelin volley first. Then getting in. And this is going to be brutal here. They'll slaughter these Mirkwood Raiders. Man, there's just so many forces from Dolgaldor, though. A lot of them are archers, though. And the archers, you know, even if they envelop, won't be too crazy. Taking volleys from up on the hill as well. This is a perfect position for them to, to hit down, you know, into the backs. Oh, and the cavalry moving in. The Elkwood Raiders and the archers are just vulnerable right now. They're charging into the enemy. Heavy infantry, but that's a perfect unit to smash into. And get stuck into. This is pretty brutal, though, because the archers are just firing right directly into the backs of these spears. We don't really have any option right there. A lot of forces committed here. And yeah, these volleys are going to be hurting the elves as thick as their armor is. I don't know how well it's going to perform. The elven general falling back. Reforming up. And then the archers come in and they're going to be moving in for another volley once again. Yeah, this archer volley is brutal. The dwarves are fighting bravely now that Thorin has arrived. And imagine cutting through these guilty orcs. Once again, is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough? As you can see, more reinforcements are arriving into the city. Realizing that they have not committed enough. They're pushing in here. But look at this. The Elven General. Because obviously there's four players, so there's multiple Elven Generals. But look at this. The, uh, the Elven General is... How oh, design. How many kills has he got? Only 95. It's still not bad. For a unit of horses, fighting mainly like crappy undead spears. Basically. Like wraiths type phantoms. Not bad. They're holding their own. They're keeping them alive. But now that we're in more reinforcements are entering the city, it's going to be starting to look a little bit shakier. Yeah, the legions are set up ready to move across. I assume that these guys are going to be going the long way around Dale and then entering through the breach just to reinforce that section. But I mean, the men of Dale have helped, helped far, far, really. They've not done a bad job whatsoever at, you know, keeping the enemy at bay. Moving back, though, how's it going? I mean, the, dwarf, the dwarves are holding. They really are. Forces of Evil, though, doing everything in their power just to get around the side, throw their javelins into the back. I hope Frangel as well is, uh, yeah, he's not going to abandon the dwarf, and I hope that Thorin is going to be wearing his mithril armor. Ready to, to, to take, take a stab to the chest. It's going to be this unit right here. It's going to be carving through the enemy. The Grim Hammers, the heavy, you know, elite armor, golden trim. They've been to Balrog. They've, they've not been scammed. Got their golden trim. I'm ready to slay some Dolgodor orcs. City of Dale in the distance, I mean. Woo, baby. Pretty intense battle. And you guys may know, one of my, literally my second most popular video of all time was the Battle of the Five Armies. So it's great to be able to redo it with the Frangio Elves. I think last time we used the Galadriel Elves, maybe? So it's great to actually use proper, you know, Dolgaldor as a faction. And also, 
use uh, yeah use Yelps properly as well. And I really hope next we get a big update to the dwarfs. That'd be amazing because we haven't got dwarf up you know, unit updates in a long time. Obviously focusing on other stuff. And the dwarfs are in a pretty good state already. They had enough units to make them stand, especially with the support as well. They were great. But it'd be great to start getting some different types of dwarfs now. It really would be. So let's take a look at the overall battlefield, see how things are going. So it does seem like the elves are, are basically broken now. Their spearmen have fully, uh, completely gone. The other units are close to being broken. With only a handful of spears still left remaining. The general is down to 14 uh, elves, and then there's only a handful of archers still left remaining. The city itself is holding firm, though. I was really in surprised how well the city was holding. Uh, and they might, might have enough to actually you know, keep this uh, pretty steady. Obviously, more reinforcements are now turning up. And they'll be able to break through the bridge pretty easily with them spears. For the most part, uh, you know, pretty decent defense there. I think they've probably done the best out of everyone, are the defenders. But, I mean, Force of Evil are running out of men. Another charge coming down the last couple. They braced though, ready to withstand this charge. As the Elven General right there dives in. I like to think the frat. Oh no, he's gone down! No! The General being slain! I like to think that wasn't Frangel, but I like to think Frangel was in the city. Brutal, though. Absolutely brutal. The lieutenant being taken down. And these archers have nowhere really left to go. Only a, a volley or two left and counter charging down the hill. The volleys come in once more. This could be it. The Lonely Mountain could crumble. And look at that. Yeah, the defenders are falling back. The position is overrun. The dwarfs have nowhere left to run. As Archer Volley after Archer Volley, and they, they, they're falling back to Erebor. This is a dark day. A dark day indeed. And for once, the forces are, good, are not going to win. There is going to be no happy ending here. The mountain is going to pave the way for, for the fall of the north and the rise of Angmar. Oh no. Oh no. Unless something drastic happens, there is no hope left. The dwarfs will sell their last stand inside the mountain. And prepare themselves for what will be their end. They are coming. There is no escape. Drums in the deep. And once again, the dwarves will be forced into their caves to, to die of air, lack of air as they hide and barricade themselves in the mountain much like when Smarg was there brutal stuff really brutal, I mean the only saving grace is that the men of Dale are, are still holding but for how much longer Lake Town Guard are obviously no match for the Glaives you can see that in the, the numbers dropping right now man after man going down and these archer volleys are simply not enough. I love these shields on the on the Dolgador orcs look amazing. Kind of like tape to their arm. And they're running low on ammunition as well and that's also a pretty bad thing. Archers falling back. Pretty going to try and mount these walls. That'll give them a nice little overview of the city. Obviously we're going to be having this general breaking pretty soon as well of archer fire and all the spears moving in as well. I mean, they've done an amazing job, though. These Elkin Riders have done insanely well, considering, but now their time has come. The hordes are breaking into the city. With the Archer Volley as well, just doing that little bit of extra damage. I think they're also surrounded as well. Yeah, they're going to break what's going to allow them to take this gate. I mean, they still have to smash down this gate, in fairness. But they'll probably be able to do it with reinforcements. They're actually sending more men to do it. Go there now. Yeah, that position's broken as well. There's still a, a small bit of uh, infantry still here. Few lone dwarfs surrounded. But yeah, the gates of Erebor. The defense will be lost. The elves have been completely broken now, yet the elves are gone. No longer here to defend their allies. 
But these are dwarfs. They will not go down without a fight. They will defend the mountain to the last. The true Dowie way. Their armor's covered in filthy orc blood. This day is a dark day unless... Unless, unless the eagles turn up, which I don't think is possible in Rise of Mordor, the day is over. And now we will see the slow destruction of the city burns once again. I don't know if you can burn a ruined city, but I guess so. Doesn't look good. And now it's just the slow demise of the men of Dale. As the Archer Volley's come in, trying to bring down as many of these glaives as possible. They have got some, they've got some good more men reinforcing, right? But there's not enough. Yeah, the Frandra has been broken. The gate has been smashed down, hammered at by blade, sword, and whatever else they have. I don't know if it's even. Yeah, it's taking damage slowly. It'll take them a while, though, to break through that gate. A, a pretty long while, honestly. I think they do still have some catapults left. No, no, the catapults are out for ammunition. And yeah, look at that. They're actually reinforcing. Oh my god, the dwarves are completely broken. Oh no, the dwarves are completely broken. The mountain is lost. The mountain is lost. Oh no. Can I go in here as well or not? No, I can't. It just brings me up the mountain. Okay, cool. Well, now the forces of Dale must hold. There is nothing else they can do as reinforcements arrive and... Bit by bit, they'll lose more and more men. Man, that's brutal. That is actually brutal. But how strong as well. You know, the elves are one of the strongest factions of the game, hands down. And but just for sheer numbers, the dog will And I think, obviously, the players played extremely well. You know, complete, like, they, they, they took every chance possible to outflank their opponents. So, really... Really impressive work right there. As well as that, I feel like the the orcs have a much easier time of it because they just have to charge forward and attack and you know kill their opponents. Whereas the defenders, the, the forces of good, have to kind of like make it more cinematic in the sense of like, oh, we should, we probably we can't commit all our men. We have to fall back and make it look cool, you know. So I think it is a little bit harder for the attackers, for the defenders even. But obviously, no one really cares too much. You know, as long as both players are playing great, which they are. It's all about creating an epic battle of the five armies. Which honestly could go either way. In the last battle we did, the forces of good won. But the skin of their teeth. Unfortunately, this day, it's not going to be as, as bright. It's going to be a dark day. And really, now all we're waiting for is one of these breach points to go you know, completely open. And I, as I say, that the breach point has gone completely open. They're going to be pushing into the city now. There's barely any ammunition left. We have one unit of, of yeoman archers. Obviously not exactly the deadliest bow unit left remaining. And they're going to be breaking into the city. The gate itself is slowly going down bit by bit. The, the main problem is these guys coming around the side into the rear of the shipmen. We're going to receive a massive morale shock right there. The morale is holding for now, but as soon as they start to rack up casualties, which they will, especially with an entire another unit coming in as well. Actually, no, I take that back. The shipment are reinforcing, so maybe this was their trap all along. So look at the distance as well over there. Look at all the, the bodies piled up from the first engagement. That's brutal. That was, a, that, was a, that was a really nice charge there by the defenders, breaking them, engaging them with their, their crappy yeomen who were going to get slaughtered, but they were a distraction to go and protect this flank, and now this unit of shipmen can reinforce here and uh, maybe even hit these guys in the side. That's exactly what I would do. It's now just come in. They have to be obviously very careful. We've got another unit of Goldor blades marching through the city itself, momentarily going to be inside the city. into the side of these guys, but still not a bad charge there. You know, hopefully whittle down their numbers. This is too much though. Look at this. The entire legions are marching back inside the city. Yeah, the forces of men. 
not stand a chance. His gate is, you know, holding. His gate is doing what it's doing. I mean, it obviously makes sense, right? Considering you're literally hitting it with axes and swords and stuff. The gate would hold. <laughs> the gate would hold. Yeah, not much left. Oh, and look at that. Wow. Them shipping. I swear we looked away for a second and the shipping just... Just incinter incinerated. Wow. And that is not good. That will spell the end of days, surely. As the last stand of Dale stands here. This will definitely go down in the history books. And let me know in the comments, guys. Let me know in the comments how how different do you think the War of the Ring would have been if the Lonely Mountain had fallen? You know, foreign dies as normal. Oh, look at all the heads rattling down as well. Oh my god, look at all them heads! Released for prisoners. Oh my, what the hell is happening? Why are so many decapitations happening? This is a massacre. Yeah, let me know in the comments how you think the, this, like, the Battle of the Five Armies being lost would have affected... Would have affected the uh, War of the Ring. Because I'd be very interested to know what you guys think of it. Would it have made a huge difference? Obviously, the, the Witch King, you know, ended up... The Witch King ended up winning at Erebor anyway, right? Later, they killed, uh... They killed, uh, Thorin's cousin. I've forgotten his name now. Uh, the guy who fought in this battle. Uh, Dane. They killed Dane and they killed, um... Bard? Or did they both die? I can't remember. I think they both died at the gates of Erebor itself. So kind of like this, you know. Uh, they ended up dying at the gates. Uh, right here. Defending the city to the last. Or defending the, uh... The Lonely Mountain. So they, they, they did... I can't even remember now. I've got a complete mind blank. I do know. Uh, but again, let me know in the comments. It'd be great to see... Uh, to, to kind of just fill in my, my mind blank, which I'm having. I mean, I'll probably Google after this anyway. But yeah, I, I know that Dane and ba uh, Bard did both die. Oh no, Bard's son, sorry. Bard's son both died. Who I also think was called Bard. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Classic names. But yeah, you know, obviously if the Witch King already had this in the north anyway, then maybe it wouldn't, you know, he would have been able to swarm down and do a lot more. You know, obviously swarm in, maybe threaten Rivendale a lot, lot sooner or at all, you know. And obviously when, uh, you know, when Elrond creates the free people, the last alliance. Yeah, there is. It's really interesting stuff. And unfortunately, that, that stuff will become reality soon enough. The last unit, the last brave unit, the general unit. Fighting to the last. Overrun. And obviously, these bowmen stand no chance. So how many, how many orcs do they have left? Still 5,000. They only lost 10,000 orcs. That's insane. They only lost 10,000 orcs, taking down 7,000 elves, dwarves, and men. Obviously, if it was a pitched battle, it'd be a completely different story. If they had the ability to to form up one big line, it would be completely different, but they didn't. They were very split, divided. And honestly, that'd be a really interesting uh, engagement as well. To actually have it, so... You know, you have this very split army, but all together, like we kind of saw, you know, with the elves and dwarves fighting together. Have kind of that with men of Gondor or something. And then just have, like, one big block of, of Mordor or something. Or Dog or Dor, or, you know, whatever. But it should be a really cool battle. Also, I love this map as well. It'd be great to see, like, a proper siege on this map. Just, like, ignore this part of the map and just literally fight here. Uh, you know, and have the defenders defend, like, maybe, like, the bridge out here. And this position, and then just kind of have a proper siege here. It'd also be you know, dope to just have a big land battle here. It's such a great map. There's so much awesome, or like awesome cinematic stuff. But there we go. They're gonna get a mass route right there. The forces of evil win the battle of the five armies. G G indeed. And as I said, massive shout out to everyone who played in this battle. Thank you guys so much for uh, you know sending this battle replay into me. I really appreciate it as it was a dope-ass battle. So if you guys want to take a look at the kills, you can see what the forces of evil managed to rack up. 200 kills on this unit of Dolgor Glaives. Almost 500 on this one. Brutal stuff. 
And then, you know, 300, you know, pretty impressive stuff here. Forces of Good, Men of Dale, obviously, their bowmen. And even one of their units of shipmen doing nice indeed. The dwarfs, over 500 kills on this unit of Grimhammers. Obviously, what to, uh, what to expect. We have the elves themselves, over 150. And then their archers with over 300. Not bad whatsoever. And the last unit, once again, archers doing amazing. And their general as well, almost 400 kills. Not bad. So, yeah, once again, thank you so much for sending this battle replay in. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And make sure to put a like and a comment. Join my Discord to be a part of battles like this. And obviously, the Rise of Mordor Discord. And I'll see you guys in the next one.